Aloha and welcome to this week's video. So this week I'm going to be making an ihe or Hawaiian short spear. Um, it's going to be a marlin tipped ihe. So this is a blue marlin bill. Uh, it's actually the bill came from the client that I'll be making the spear for. Um, I've done a mixture of both in the past where I, I sourced my own bills from local fishermen. Although most of the, the spears uh, that I make, tend, the bill tends to come from the client. Um, this one's from a, a fisherman in Hawaii, and so I'll be working on this build. And I did all of the prep on the build already, so I've actually had this build now for, oh, probably about two months, letting it dry. I hollowed out the inside and then filled it with uh, epoxy. I used uh, a very low viscous epoxy, so it's very light, very thin. That way it fills in all the pores and seals off the entire bill. Uh, so now that it's been sitting, I'm ready to start working on it. Uh, the first thing I did is I went ahead and cut out the tongue. So I'm going to use a tongue and groove joint between the koa wood and the marlin bill. Um, and then I'm going to peg it. So that way it'll have a nice mechanical hold in addition to the epoxy that's going to be used to set it into place. Um, I want to make this uh, joint here pretty tight. And so I'm just kind of going back and forth until it's nice and clean and a good fit. And then I'll, I can go ahead and epoxy it together. The reason why I want it to be pretty tight is even though the epoxy will hold, the primary holds are still going to be the pegging and the lashing. Um, the, the epoxy is really just to kind of help, although it will leave a pretty solid joint, a pretty solid connection, especially since the center of the marlin bill is filled with epoxy already. So that epoxy on epoxy should hold on fairly decently. Um, it should be a pretty decent uh, connection. So I went ahead and let that sit. Um, I think I let that sit for about two days. I just wanted to make sure it was nice and solid before I came in and drilled out the sections where the pegs are gonna go. Um, I haven't started any shaping yet on the handle. Uh, it's a lot easier to add the pegs in while it's flat like this, just because I can drill in the peg holes uh, without it wobbling or worrying about if I'm off center or off key. Um, if you've already rounded it off, it can be actually a little bit of a challenge. And so I, I like to put those in first. Usually I would use wood glue if I'm ever going to peg a joint. Um, I decided to use epoxy for this just because the center of the marlin bill is epoxy. And if there's any bone in there, the epoxy will seep into the bone and, and settle with that a lot stronger. Um, and so I decided to use epoxy for these pegs rather than uh, wood glue. I'm using wooden pegs. Um, I think these are oak. I can't remember. Um, they're quarter inch pegs and I'm, or dowels actually. I think these are, are wooden dowels, oak dowels. Uh, but they're quarter inch and I'm using them as pegs, uh, pegging. And that'll just hold, make a nice mechanical hold. So you, the, the bill, you would never be able to pull it out. And because it has two points of contact, that'll also help it from pivoting up and down. So if you just had a single peg, um, if the epoxy broke or became weak, potentially the bill could still pivot on that one peg. But since there's two pegs, uh, it would have to snap one of the pegs first before it would be able to pivot on the other one. Um, and so it just makes for a significantly stronger joint. And then obviously, it's not going to pivot on the two, uh, the leaves or the, the, the groove section for the tongue and groove joint. So the next step here is I'm just going to be shaping um, and sanding. The, the shape and sand, it's, it's fairly basic. Uh, if I had a lathe, it'd be even more basic. <laughs> but I don't have a lathe. So the process flow is you just work down the corners and you keep working the corners, making sure it stays straight and sanding away. Um, I sanded it all the way down to 320, and then the last step here is I'm holding the sandpaper or sanding disc as 320 as well. Uh, that way it removes all grooves. So it's not perfectly cylindrical just because the bill itself isn't perfectly cylindrical. Cylindrical, it's kind of an oval shape. Um, I, I kind of like that for a couple of reasons. One, it holds better in the hand, and two, it complements the shape of the bill a little bit better. But once I have the, now that I have the whole piece sanded down to 320, including the bill, I can go ahead and cut in the grooves. 
So I'm using just my regular Dremel here, and it's a tungsten carbide bit. Um, I'm very comfortable with it. Uh, you might be less comfortable with it. It's just how I put in grooves. I do this with, on my wooden pieces as well, not just on bone. Um, you do have to be careful though, because if it jumps on you, it'll definitely put in some deep scratches into the bill, and those can be a hassle to remove. Um, sometimes they're too deep and you, you can't remove them. Um, you, you end up sanding too much of the bill in order to remove them, so you do want to be careful. And then to put in the teeth, I'm doing the same thing that I do for all of my pieces. I put in a little bit of epoxy in the groove, and then I let the teeth uh, sit. This holds them in place so that when I drill the teeth and lash them, I don't have to worry about them falling all over the place. Uh, traditionally, they would hand cut the grooves and the grooves would be very tight and so the teeth would be wedged into place as well as drilled and then they, they, they drill them while they're in place and then lash them. Um, I'm not doing that, I use the Dremel to cut it so just faster. <laughs> uh, now that I have, I let them sit for about 45 minutes, so just enough that I can start uh, working on them. They're a little bit loose still, so I have to use my finger to kind of hold them into place, but that's not a big deal. Um, and then I drilled in the center holes for the lashing first. No real reason behind that, it was just they were a little bit easier to get at. Um, and then once I had those drilled in, I can come here with my a smaller tungsten bit to tap in the holes into the teeth and then I'm just sanding away any excess uh, epoxy that was left over from when I glued it. This way I can go ahead and oil the entire piece. <laughs> now last time if you saw my last video I totally screwed up or rather my camera screwed up. Um, the file was corrupted and I missed the oiling process so I made sure on this one that I caught it. <laughs> Uh, now, oiling the spears, that, the koa wood that I used on this uh, ihe is very beautiful. You can't really get a good shot of it from here just because it's a, a larger piece, but the bill looked absolutely gorgeous. Um, I do love oiling the bill. I used quite a, a thick layer of tongue oil on the bill just because I wanted it to soak in to any remaining pores that didn't get filled in with the epoxy. Um, what's kind of cool that you can't see it here uh, is part of the bill is hollow where I filled it with the epoxy and you can almost see that peg where it slides through so it's kind of cool because it's a clear epoxy. Um, you can start to see the figure and the curl on the handle on the, the, the shaft part of the spear. Man does that look beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> I just love the way that the coal wood looks. It's just a, a very warm inviting color so it's very beautiful very gorgeous and makes amazing weapons <laughs> so here's the oiled piece um, the teeth are in place the bill is just a very solid powerful bill and you can kind of see the curl and you can see that peg right there right where my thumb was at but you can kind of see the curl on the piece it looks really nice so i'm going to let this sit for about 24 hours and now i can come back to it and lash in the teeth and then lash the joint and then lash the decorative feathers. The first thing that I do with the lashing is I super glue the end and that kind of just hardens the end. That makes it easier to lash with. It's almost like a, a needle at that point. Um, otherwise, if you had a fine needle, you could use that as well. I just kind of like to super glue the end and that just makes it for an easier time lashing back and forth without needing to go through and find a, a needle that will fit. And then the pat lashing pattern I'm using here is just a very default pattern, a very basic pattern. It creates triangles on both sides. Um, and you'll see that when it's complete. Uh, but it'll actually, it'll create almost like a diamond look um, in the center, which kind of looks pretty cool. But it, it creates a, a triangle pattern on the inside of the teeth. Um, and then I, I'm pulling it extremely tight as I go through. This is a waxed cordage. And so the friction when I pull it helps to keep it tight while I lash each section of tooth together. Uh, if you were to do this traditionally, uh, you would probably, not probably, you would, they would lash one or two teeth at a time. And that's done so that uh, when the teeth get damaged and broken, they only have to undo the lashing on a single set, uh, you know, on a single tooth or a set of teeth. And so it makes a lot faster for repairs. 
Um, I kind of like the look of a single lash or, or a two lash, depending on how many teeth and size I have. And so I, I, I do it this way. If I do break the teeth, though, I have to redo the entire lashing, which is such a pain in the butt. <laughs> and the last step is just tucking in the, the remainder, the tails that are left over from cutting off the ends. And then I put just a little bit of glue on there to kind of harden it up and make it sit. And then what you'll notice there is I put some tape, uh, painter's tape on the end, and that's to hold a loop. And then I'm tying this section here, and then just a really tight wrap, and then occasionally I'm putting in a small wrap over knot. And uh, the, the tight wrap will then lock into place once the tail gets pulled through that loop, and the loop you pull tight from the other side. And you'll see that here in just a little bit. Uh, but the, the wrap here is just a really tight, tight wrap. This way, there's just no way that that joint is going to move in any direction. Um, I don't have to do this. This is technically going to be hidden underneath the uh, decorative feathers, uh, but I, I want to. Um, this, most, this piece is going to be a wall hanger, but I like to make each piece of mine functional, so as if it was going to be used, if it was going to go um, into battle. Uh, originally, these weapons were made specifically for battle. They, they were not decorative pieces. They were made to fight, um, and so I like to make sure that the things that I make keep that essence. Um, and then same thing as before, I'm using a little bit of super glue to kind of harden it up. Um, this is kind of the same thing that you would see like Native Americans do where they would apply pitch and, and then lash on top of the pitch and then apply a little bit more and you get and then a leather on top of that and it kind of just holds everything into place. And then the, the feathers here, they're just a rooster feather but they're kind of they're all bound together and then I'm using a little bit of glue just to kind of hold them in place um, so that when I go to lash the feathers it'll it'll be easier to lash them and then the lashing will will lock it all into place and same thing if you had a natural pitch you put that around compress the feathers into that and then lash over top of it so it's a very similar process just a little bit more modern materials <laughs> so I'm actually going to do the exact same type of uh, wrap here so I have a loop taped to the back side. I'm going to go ahead and tape off this little pigtail that's hanging on this side. That way I don't have to worry about it. Uh, and then I'm going to go ahead and do a wrap knot on, on the end and then do a tight wrap. And that'll hold the feathers into place. Um, it actually holds it, locks them in really well. Um, the only way that the feathers would fall off in this situation is if uh, it, you, you cut the lashing off. Um, the, the feathers actually did have a purpose in a lot of weapons. Um, the Part of their reason was decoration, but uh, a main purpose for them was actually to beat off blood. So if you stab someone, you attack someone, obviously blood is going to drip down the bill and onto the handle. That makes the handle slippery. And so feathers bleed off the blood. The blood will bleed off the feathers, and instead of coming onto the handle, they, they bleed off from there. And so it, it does actually have a functional purpose as well. And then the ihe, or short spear, was also thrown underhand thrown occasionally. And feathers like that could also help with that flight. Now looking at the finished piece in the natural light, man, this piece is beautiful. I absolutely loved it. It's a very simple yet powerful piece. Uh, it takes a lot more time than it looks to put this together. It looks like a fairly simple piece, but man, was it fun. And it has a nice, good balance right in the center worked absolutely beautifully so i'm definitely going to be testing with this although i'm only going to be doing some light testing i'm just going to do a couple thrustings uh, stabs into the ballistics gel and then a couple stabs <laughs> so i didn't tighten the bottom section good enough and uh, i had enough force when i i pushed that in that it lifted the whole thing so i tightened it up tested it again and that time it held the way that I was wanting it to and man does it just stab into the ballistics gel it's absolutely brutal so this would be just unbelievably painful and then using the edges it actually makes for a pretty decent knife as well uh, and you'll see that here in just a little bit but even if you missed or glanced um, and just got the edge of the teeth you would still just absolutely slice someone open um, you could even use it as a knife, a long-distance knife. Uh, but this piece was a ton of fun. It's been a long time since I've been able to make a spear, or at least a uh, marlin-tipped spear. 
Um, again, a, a short spear in Hawaiian is ihe. The long spears are ginormous. I, I don't have a piece of wood uh, large enough for that. They're about 14 feet. The short spear is about six to eight. But I hope you enjoyed the video. I know I had a ton of fun. It's been a long time since I've made one. If you liked it, like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Aloha.